Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to look at how to find profitable trading opportunities in DeFi. So you can think of DeFi as being this graph of financial products that's completely open. You can see everything. And hence, it, you basically need to find the optimal path along this graph of financial products and you might discover profitable opportunities. Note that sometimes these profitable opportunities might be a tax. So you can even identify a tax with such tools. So let's dive in. All right, so how can we detect arbitrage or profitable opportunities in DeFi? In this lecture, we'll be looking at mainly two methods. The first one is the Bellman Ford algorithm. Um, and the second one is the theorem solver, also um, typically referenced as an SMT solver in the literature. So the Bellman Ford algorithm is uh, something that allows you to find negative cycles in a graph. Um, so it allows you to basically identify whether you can do an arbitrage trade, a circular arbitrage trade. Um, the beauty is it works among multiple markets, so multiple assets, so a market typically has two assets um, and you can chain several markets as we would see in a, in a later slide. So this algorithm is really extensively used in traditional finance and we show how you can actually use it in DeFi. The SMT solver on the other hand um, needs to encode the, the, the DeFi models in a particular model, so while the Bellman Ford algorithm can be applied quite easily uh, to to a DeFi graph, or graph of mark, uh, uh, a graph of markets, the DeFi, the um, the SMT solver needs a DeFi model that's manually encoded, which is quite uh, quite a lot of manual work. However, the SMT solver can give you then uh, a satisfiable path, which can be very rewarding depending on the on the on the solution that you find. So in order to reduce the search base of the SMT solver, you might want to apply some heuristics for path pruning, as we will show in a bit. Um, and uh, let's look into the specific systems that use those two methods. So they are both called DeFi Poser, with ARP being the Bellman Ford algorithm and SMT, the SMT solver version. So both depart here from a block I. So this is really the blockchain state or represents the blockchain state that you're looking at, right? Everything, uh, basically the past blockchain history here defines how we got to this particular state. But for the sake of this example here, we're looking at this particular block I. So if the blockchain state changed to the previous state, which typically happens, right, in, in, in DeFi, people are performing trades on the market, then the state changed. Then we can call either uh, the SMT version or the ARP version. So let's go first with the ARP version or the Bellman Ford uh, DeFi poster. So we basically can build a DeFi graph of the various markets, which we will do in the next slide. And I will show you really in detail how this works. And uh, then we have a negative cycle detection. Right. This is what the Bellman Ford algorithm can do. So the, the algorithm can tell you whether there is a negative cycle and there might, be, uh, there might be one or there might be not one. Sometimes you don't find any. Then we perform what's called a greedy search, right? So you can, can search in the, uh, additionally in the, in, the, in the cycle detection, maybe you find several cycles and you, you take the one that's the most profitable for you. So we continue and repeat this this process here. Um, so the SMT solver, on the other hand, is a little bit more complex. It involves like several different steps, but in the end, it, it reaches the same the same goal. So in the first place, we have to perform a manual manual modeling of the DeFi protocols. So for example, we take Uniswap and we write a model, a new model that represents how Uniswap works. We do this with Curve and with any other DeFi protocol that we want to capture. Uh, then we apply a few uh, heuristics, path trimming heuristics. For example, if we want, don't want to capture some uh, paths in this DeFi graph, uh, then we can trim this here. So this might be sometimes interesting in order to reduce the search base space, but we also have to be aware that these heuristics, they might ca cut some of our revenue. Uh, and unfortunately, trimming heuristics is necessary because often the theorem provers are quite limited in their ability to solve um, to solve problems. So depending on the SMT solver, obviously, 
Um, but um, that's what we found to be to be useful here. And then you can basically plug this all in in the theorem prover and let the theorem prover run. So there are various theorem provers out there, like Z3 is a, is a potential one, Souffle is another one. So you can you can look into those yourself if you're interested. And so the the state, I mean everything everything that we get out here of this particular market should then be a particular trait that we should do, right? So for example. Um, it might be we have to go to Uniswap, exchange Ether to DAI, then we go to SushiSwap, change DAI to Ether, and this is a circle already, right? So this is a very simple arbitrage circle that these tools might have found. But there are also much more complex um, uh, traits that can be found through these automated tools. So you really get like this uh, strategy or the transaction and what you can do before you broadcast this transaction you can execute it locally so you perform a validation through concrete execution so concrete execution basically means that you're executing a particular transaction locally on a particular block height right and you don't broadcast it yet and if if you you find it's actually profitable right then you might broadcast that transaction and you will try to mine this transaction at the top of the next block or at some, some position in the next block. Uh, I'm, I'm referring here to the top of the next block because you don't want others to front run your transaction and to take away the opportunities that you identified, obviously. Now, um, this, is, this is basically the, the entire model, right? And the entire uh, state here. As far as I'm aware, this is the first tool that does this for you in an automated state in real time so we, we can actually if you have here a block interval time of like whatever about 12 seconds for example in ethereum then DeFi Posa is actually able to to give you a solution uh, rather quickly in a few seconds and you shouldn't wait too long you should probably not wait six seconds even uh, in, before you broadcast a, a transaction because the transaction also needs to broad uh, needs to propagate in the network needs to reach miners etc so, um, but yeah, we, we think that it's really like a first step towards finding profitable opportunities in DeFi graph based on a blockchain state and a DeFi state, right? Because some applications might be sometimes vulnerable depending on their state. Um, so these are not traditional vulnerabilities, but rather state dependent uh, issues that might arise. And um, so we certainly need more such tools that allow us to reason about the security of of the um, composable DeFi protocols. Very well, now let's look at the DeFi graph, like a particular example at least of the DeFi graph. Here, for the sake of this example, we're looking at DeFi Posa ARP, so the Bellman Ford version of DeFi Posa. We have um, a blockchain state with four markets. Um, here we have the assets A and B, and here we have B and A, B and C, and C and A. And if you look at these markets, we can already see that uh, the red and the blue markets, they actually have both the same assets. Our objective is we have an input, which is here one element of asset A, and we would like to input this particular element and out get basically back out more, right? The, so we want to get out more than we put in initially. So this is what we basically visualize here with this particular example. Now, if you just look at this particular state, you already see, well, I mean, I could just go into the first market uh, where I can trade A to B, and then I go to the third market here where I can trade B back to A. And my objective is that I get, I get something back uh, that's P1 times PA, right? Because these are the two prices on these two markets. And uh, the profitable condition for my trade is that P1 times P4 is superior to 1. If that's true, then I can perform a trade among these two markets. Now, we can also perform a trade across three markets. So we could go again into the red market at the very beginning, right? So we go here into A over B. Then we go to the second, to the yellow market here. We swap B to C. And then we go to the green market here where we finally swap C to A. So those two solutions that I've just shown you are both 
cyclic arbitrage and they're both uh, possible in this particular market state configuration. Again, just like the example before, we have to make sure that the, the, uh, the sum, uh, the, the product here of the different prices is beyond one, right? Because we want the change to be, uh, we want the exchange to be profitable. And as such, we have this profitable con condition that this is superior to one. Now, if we, if we basically model this as a graph, right? Then you can look at this really like here, like a, like a traditional Bellman Ford graph. Uh, in order to apply the Bellman Ford algorithm, we need to find, uh, I mean, the Bellman Ford algorithm can find for you negative cycles. So it has a negative cycle detection mechanism. And for doing that, we need to translate it into this particular form uh, that's, that's expressed here, right? Okay, so we basically do this conversion, right? From this, from the product of the prices superior to one to this particular sum. And uh, we then apply the Bellman Ford Moore algorithm, which uh, has the following complexity. So the number of uh, nodes in the graph is N and the number of edges in the graph is denoted as E. And so here, this is a particular node. An edge in the graph is this particular edge, for example. So the complexity of this algorithm is O n square times E. So DeFi Poser SMT is the other solution that we discussed earlier, right? So here we can basically see that the uh, what we do is we have a model in the very first state, right? We want to create a model uh, that can be uh, that can be uh, represented that represents the DeFi actions and and uh, the, the basically the, the actions of a particular DeFi platform. So we formulated the model. So for example, you can take Uniswap, you can take Curve, and then you, you really need to translate it. It's a, it's, a trans, it's, a, it's, a, it's a translation process from la one language to, to the, like for, from a, for example, Solidity language to, to the symbolic model language uh, that these SMT solvers can, can operate on. Then we perform a, a path pruning process, right, where we can apply heuristics to reduce the search space. Uh, so it's important that the path must not include any loops, for instance, right? We don't want to, to cycle indefinitely. So we want to, um, to, uh, to, to find a, a, like a finite solution. Uh, and then we can, we can input all this into an SMT solver. So the SMT solver has an object, objective constraint so that the final profit is greater than the target value. So for example, we can set a target value as being one ether. And then we can, we can try to solve this and also perform optimization through binary search, for example, to find the optimal value. So the SMT solver will tell us whether there's a solution given that particular target value. And if there's no solution, obviously we need to decrease, for example, we can go to 0.5 ether, etc., uh, until we find a, 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 a close to optimal value uh, with this approach. So when we evaluate DeFi Poser, we can actually compare uh, the Bellman Ford variant and the SMT variant quite objectively. So in this plot here, on the x-axis, you have the block number, which represents the time. So this is the, the time, uh, the, the blockchain time. Uh, so we evaluated this uh, from beginning of 2020 until May 2020. And in this particular example, you can see here the DeFi Poser ARP, right? This is this one here, is actually found uh, the, the highest revenue, right? So this is the cumulative revenue um, in, in Ether, as we express here on the plot. And you can see that the, uh, that the uh, DeFi Poser uh, ARP transaction fee is a little bit higher than the DeFi Poser uh, SMT transaction fee, most likely because the uh, ARP version found simply more, more potential uh, sources, right? Okay, so... Um, then we have um, uh, what, what basically as part of our evaluation, we had 96 actions on the Uniswap Banker MakerDAO markets and we covered a, a total of 25 assets. So while this might sound like something, it's 
not not really like a lot right in DeFi terms so there are many more markets there are, there are many many more assets out there that you could could include in such evaluation but it's quite um, from an empirical perspective it's really really intense to model all these markets in a for example the SMT version right so it wouldn't wouldn't scale easily to perform such evaluation on on any on any kind of market at least if you consider the SMT market um, what's quite important, however, if you perform such uh, experiment is to perform concrete execution. So you want to verify whether what your models tell you uh, is, 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 is valid, right? So the models are obviously a representation of reality. They might not always represent reality. So that's something quite to be, to be, uh, to, 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 to be aware of and to, to be careful about. So overall, uh, we found that the DeFaposa ARP really generates a significant higher revenue. Um, I would like to note, however, that the SMT solver, so we modeled actually the BZX platform in the SMT solver and found that the um, that, uh, DeFaposa SMT was able to detect um, the BZX attack. So that's something that the DeFi Posa app is not able to do because there was no there was no cycle in this particular um, in this particular attack. So sometimes the more complicated tools, if you really model your, your victim platforms, you might find attacks. While, uh, for example, the Bellman Fold algorithm might not be able to capture those. So finally, to just give you like an overall comparison, so we have various methods to perform a path generation. In for finding profitable DeFi transactions, we have uh, various path selection mechanisms. Uh, some tools require manual modeling, some don't. So uh, ideally, you don't want to have manual modeling because it doesn't scale otherwise. However, you must or you should at least capture non-cyclic strategies because most of the attacks that we are aware of are non-cyclic. Finally, you might want to look at what is um, what parameters you choose and if they are optimal. And last but not least, certainly the complexity of your solution is important. So here you can see DeFi ARP has only about 300 lines of code in Python, while the SMT version is almost an order of magnitude more complex. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I am I hope that you are quite excited now to jump on coding your own DeFi poser or new tool, next generation tool to find profitable opportunities, whether these are arbitrage, attacks, or various other ideas that you might have. So try and get creative. Um, I hope this was very helpful.